love crime fiction, always able to pick the murderer before the final chapter, then you're in the right place. Welcome to the TV show with only one question. Who done it? Detectives, the show where these 15 murder mystery enthusiasts will try and solve a deadly crime by the end of today's programme. Our studio detectives are placed at the centre of a crime scene set in the fictional village of Mortcliffe. It's the place with the highest murder rate in Britain. They'll watch the drama play out as Mortcliffe's favourite police officers try and crack the crime. There they are, D.I. Knight, D.C. Slater and scene of crime officer Simmons. I'm curious about their lives, I'll be honest with you. Before we head to Markcliffe for the first time, let's meet today's armchair detectives. Hello, armchair detectives. Hi. Oh, you're always so bright and breezy and up for it. Now, only three of you can play each day, so please take your armchairs. Simon, Bola and Charlie, coming up. <laughs> So, Simon, tell me, what do you do when you're not playing armchair detectives? Well, Susan, I'm a tour guide. Oh, lovely. Are you looking forward to today, Simon? Oh, can't wait. <laughs> oh, he's rubbing his hands with glee. <laughs> Bola, welcome. What do you Thank do you. when you're not being an armchair detective? So, I'm a business consultant. Are you going to be a leader of the armchair detectives? Um, yeah, but I'm, I reckon we're going to work as a team first and foremost, but absolutely, I'll be getting my point across. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie. Now, I hear your partner's also an armchair detective. She is indeed. Where? That's Laura sitting Hi, there. Hi, Laura. And so who usually picks out the murderer? I've got a little bit of a cheat on this one, because I was a detective of the Metropolitan Police for nearly 10 years. Oh, so... I, here we are. Yep. <laughs> here we go. Well, let's see if that helps you at all, Charlie. If any of these guys guess the killer, then this is what they're going to win. That's right. It's the armchair detective's golden magnifying glass. <laughs> Now, just to let you know, armchair detectives, I have no idea who the killer is either, so I'm going to be playing along with you all as well. Let's begin, as it's time for round one, the crime scene. Notepads at the ready. For the first time today, let's head over to Bay Cliffs in Mortcliffe. <laughs> What did the seagull say to the police officer? Now, now, Simmons, it's be kind to the DC day. I'm working on my empathy. Right. Well, we have a fall victim. Seen far too many of these over the last year or two. That's the fifth around the same spot. Who is the victim? Gemma Hall. Broken bones and internal injuries consistent with a long fall. Her boyfriend's just over there. Thanks, Simmons. Cheers, Simmons. Gemma and I were walking across the top of the cliff about an hour ago. We were here to meet an old school friend of Gemma's who'd recently been in touch. We were here early and I needed the toilet. I went off to find a bush. It was right after that that I heard the scream. Did you notice anything else? I heard someone running. I thought it was Gemma. When I came back to the path, she wasn't there. I looked over and saw her lying at the bottom of the cliff. I dialed 999 and ran down the steps, but... She was already dead. We're very sorry for your loss, Dale. Is there anything else that you can tell us that may be of some importance? She was a happy person. We wanted to get married. There's no way this was suicide. Can you show me where that bush is? It's the big bush by the blocks over there. Is everything OK? There's been a fatality. How long have you been in the area today, sir? I've only just arrived for my walk. I do so every day. Notice anything unusual? Nope. This seems to be quite the hot spot for jumpers these days. How long did you say you've been walking in the area today, sir? Maybe just under half an hour. I didn't do it, if that's what you're thinking. I have a tracker on my phone. I can show you. Why have you got a tracker? It tells me how far I've walked and exactly where I've been. I like to track my hikes. OK. We'll need the data off that. I'll take your details. What's your name? 
McBride. Hamish McBride. No fencing or barriers. There are warning signs, though. How long do you think this path runs for? Ah, looking at the erosion, it probably changes all the time. Ah, look at that, sir. Phone. I'll get Simmons. Oh, and I want that bush tested. The one Dale said he urinated behind, just to be sure. Sure. But well, we only have his version of Vance. He could have easily pushed her over. Thank you, sir. Least I can do, Slater. Four hits, sir. You'll have to elaborate. After what Simmons said, I searched for deaths during the past year within a mile of the cliffs. Four hits came back, not including Gemma Hall. All of them have fallen from the very same cliff. David Parkin, 55, from Perryvale. Leanna Schofield, 24, from Moorcliffe. Lewis Murphy, 35, and Liam Clark, also 35, from Moorcliffe. Uh, any connection between the victims? Well, three years ago, they all served on the same jury together. A man called Brendan Wilson was charged. Convicted, too, for fraud. Got six years for it. He died in prison. I spoke to an officer who interviewed Gemma's parents. Gemma's father said that she'd become friends with another juror and that they died at the same place. The procurator fiscal has already given us special permission to see the full juror list. Oh. Looks like someone wasn't happy with the verdict. Any of the other jurors in the local area? Yeah, three. OK. Let's get them in for questioning. Right away. Well, audible gasps from the armchair detectives. The killer's fast. I think he's actually quite young, athletic, because if the boyfriend went behind the bush, quickly run up, push, quickly leg it back. I'm possibly erring on somebody of the same jury. Um, that could have been the murderer, but that's just my initial views. OK. Yeah. Well, today we are investigating the death of Gemma Hall. She was 25 and a barmaid. Gemma's boyfriend was Dale Coleman. The cause of death is a suspected fall from height causing fatal internal injury to Gemma's vital organs. The time of death is approximately 10 a.m. Um, with the boyfriend, you know, what was the relationship like? If she's in a bar every single day with people cracking on to her, was he the jealous type, was he not? She, um, I don't think she was that important to the killer. There was no hardly planning involved. You know, you, you, you push someone, it is literally a five second split. Mm. OK, we have Dale Coleman, who's the boyfriend, and Hamish McBride, who was in the area when the victim died. Now, we haven't really spoken about Hamish. He's got quite quick with the explanation about the tracker. If someone volunteers information, then I'm automatically suspicious. It's the ABCs, assume nothing, believe no one, and challenge everything. Mm. OK, so each round, you'll get to pick evidence to interrogate more closely. Here's a piece to start you off. And we have a map of the Bay Cliff area. Marked on this map are the locations where the previous victims fell from the cliffs, including Gemma. So quite close in proximity. Could it be a meeting point if they were all friends? Did they often walk there together? Mm -hmm. um, so that's where my head's at at the moment. Mm -hmm. If they have all been lured to this location, there's a degree of significance to whoever is killing them. Personally, I think we're dealing with a psychopath right here. <laughs> Honestly, I think we're actually dealing with a full-blown psychopath. In. Straight in. <laughs> OK, well, it's time now for round two, last movements. We'll see what happened in the fateful final moments before Gemma Hall's death. Notepads at the ready. Let's head back to the Baycliffs Mortcliff. You're always on that phone. Can't you take your eyes off it for a second? Oh, don't be so miserable. It's just photos. Can you just enjoy a nice sea walk? I can think of better things to be doing. Come here. <laughs> Smile. Oh, that's lovely. Who's that? Nothing, just work. Um, I need the toilet. Be right back. Okay, well, 
Don't be long. Fiona will be here soon. Well, well, well. So first of all, I'd love to see that picture that she took, um, the selfie of, of the two of them, because maybe it could show somebody in the background. Secondly, he's a bit jealous. He's not liking her being on her phone, but then he got a message and wouldn't reveal to her who it was. So I'd like to see what that message was as well. People put things in their phone that they won't tell their barman or their priest. So I think phones yeah. will give you the ins and outs of somebody's mm. life without yeah. fail. Well, let's take another look at the suspect's board. We have Dale Coleman and Hamish McBride. I'm quite sceptical of Dale um, from him saying that he was behind the bush and he heard somebody running off. Now, when the detectives were up there, it was quite noisy, quite windy in some distance. So I'd find it difficult to believe he heard somebody running. OK. Let's crack on. You can have an evidence pick now, and it's one from the following list. You need to decide amongst yourselves as a group which one you're going for. We have the data from Hamish's health tracker app, or a letter to the victim, and finally, the last selfie of the couple before Gemma's death. I know, they're all <laughs> good, aren't they? I know. Um, the last photo we've always thought, oh, that looks a bit fun, but this letter is something we know nothing about. I'm heading towards the letter at this moment in time. I'm heading towards the letter as well. OK. The letter, letter I think. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to see the letter? Please. OK. So we can reveal the letter sent to the victim claiming to know them. So it says, Hi, Gemma. I've just discovered your address through Ruth Potter. I'm Fiona Williams. Remember me? It's been ages since we were at school together. How are you? I walk the dogs every Thursday from 10 a.m. at Bay Cliffs. Fancy meeting there next week. So, who's Ruth and why are you giving out people's addresses? You know, it's 2017, you've got Facebook and everything else. I'm sure you could get yeah. in contact by yeah. other ways. Yeah. Don't believe it. I mean, if they were living in the same town, you know, surely they, you know, see each other. That's mm. quite a small town. Um, it's, you know, come down to the murder cliffs so I can totally not murder you. It's, yeah, wildly, yeah. wildly <laughs> suspicious. Well, armchair detectives, it's prime suspect time. Write down a name now of who you think the prime suspect is. <laughs> OK, time's up. Notepads away, please, armchair detectives. Simon. Hamish. Hey, Hamish, why? I think there's a past life he's trying to get away from. Maybe he's going back to his old deeds again. Maybe. Uh, Bola, who do you think? I've gone for Dale. At the moment, based on the evidence I've got, he's my prime suspect. Yeah. And Charlie? I bring in the boyfriend on basic principle at this stage. Yes. He's, he's there, he's convenient. Let's find out what he knows. OK. Well, now it's on to round three, which is the police interviews. Knight and Slater widen their search for who the suspects might be. Notepads at the ready. It's off to Mortcliffe Police Station. You no longer live in Mortcliffe? After we got married, we had some trouble from a neighbour, so we moved. What was the issue with your neighbour? Our neighbour was anti-gay. Yes, I notice you reported a couple of incidents. Can you tell us about the Brendan Wilson trial? I'll say this. I didn't like Brendan Wilson. He was angry, abusive and homophobic. But I don't know if he did it. Why is that? I didn't think the evidence was strong enough to convict him. I didn't want to send the chap down if I wasn't sure. Did you know Gemma Hall before the trial? I didn't really get to know her during it either. Why would I? And subsequent to the trial? No. Did you know that her parents were your homophobic neighbours? Mr Hall, her father, was quite vitriolic towards both you and your partner. That can't have been very pleasant. 
it is a bit of a coincidence that you were right there. Did you know Gemma's parents were your neighbours? Yes, I did. Well, my gut instinct told me he was 100% guilty. I always listen to my gut. We'll never trust a person who cannot make up their own mind. There was a huge difference in opinion. Well, half of us said he was guilty and the other half believed he was innocent. But you're not allowed to reveal the details of confidential juror discussions. <laughs> we spoke about it all over the place, not only during deliberations. Well, there was a fair bit of lobbying from both sides, if I'm honest. Too much chit-chat, not enough action. But in the end, we only deliberated for a day. Oh, so not that long then. The facts spoke for themselves. I was never in any doubt. The only issue was, and this didn't speak to Brendan's guilt or his innocence, but I maintain his brother James played a bigger role than he said he did. What was Brendan like? Brendan didn't strike me as a very nice man either. It's no loss he died in prison. That will save the taxpayer a few coppers. How do you know he's dead? Um, I remember hearing about it on the news about a year ago. Yeah, I remember reading about it and watching it on the news. Miss Donaldson, could you tell us about the trial of Brendan Wilson? Brendan was convicted on flimsy evidence given by his brother. I can tell you right now, it was James who masterminded the whole thing. Do you know the Baycliff area? I've been receiving some letters from Fiona Williams. The last letter was last week to meet her at Baycliff, but I haven't been able to go because, well, because I've been having chemotherapy recently and my energy isn't good at the best of times. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I was diagnosed with leukaemia recently. I'm just taking it day by day. Who is Fiona Williams? Oh, this is fantastic. Uh, we actually have a murderer who is posing as another person. Two letters in just a short period of time from Fiona saying, meet at this one place. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Charlie. And I want to know a lot more about our last young lady who is Margaret Donaldson, because f frankly, the chemotherapy is a very nice kind of cover. Mm. Everyone's volunteering a lot of information so to the police, convenient. aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So we have more suspects to add. We now have Dale Coleman, Hamish McBride. We also have Donna Atkins, who was a jury member. Margaret Donaldson, who was a jury member, and James Wilson, who we've not met yet, but who has been referred to. There's something not right about Donna. She's a very, seems like a very vicious kind of woman. It's when she said there was a lot of talking, but not enough action. Yes. She looked really serious as if to say, action yeah. needed to be taken. Donna doesn't have the motive to uh, enact revenge upon the jury because she got what she wanted. I think it's got something to do with the opposing sides here. Probably mm. need to jot down who's on which side here to maybe mm -hmm. work it out a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, once again, you can pick a piece of evidence mm -hmm. and we've added a new one to the list. So you can have uh, the data from Hamish's health tracker app or the last selfie of the couple before Gemma's death. And the new piece of evidence is letters sent to Margaret Donaldson. If we have the letter and there is a match, but then again, there might be something in the last picture. I have a feeling we could collect dozens of letters in the same handwriting, all from Fiona Williams to each juror. Unless it was a different handwriting, it wouldn't move us any further forward. Um, the, the, the... I, I'm edging towards the photo. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see if any of the suspects, because it, it's widened down, mm. are in that photo. Absolutely. Yes. That's what I want to go for. Yeah. Last photo OK, there, so think. you've chosen the last photo of the couple. It's a selfie by Gemma of herself and her boyfriend, Dale. The photo was taken on the Bay Cliffs and uploaded onto Gemma's social media shortly before her death. Back left, bald head. It's a bit of orange or it's a bald head and we don't know whether James Wilson has hair or not. 
Right. We don't. We've got Hamish what? McBride is bald. Whenever, yeah. though, we have a few hiding places. It's one, mm. two. Oh, yeah. We have about five. We have you about could put a platoon in there, for heaven's places. sake. It's time to write down your prime suspect again. The suspects are Dale, Hamish, Donna, Margaret and James. Time's up. Notepads away, armchair detectives, please. Simon, last time you picked Hamish, have you changed your mind? Nope, I'm sticking with him. Good. Bola, last time you went for Dale, have yeah. you changed your mind? Um, possibly a uh, crime of passion, so yeah, I'm sticking, with, sticking okay. with Dale. And Charlie, last time you went for Dale, Indeed I did. have you changed your mind? I have gone for Margaret. And Why? We have the little bald head in the last photograph around the back. Hamish is a nice, obvious bald guy, and she's in the middle of chemotherapy, oh. which no one's going to think of. So I feel like a bit of a monster for suggesting it, but. Okay, it's time for round four. Dig deeper. Let's head to Mortcliffe Courthouse three years earlier to find out more. <laughs> I know which way I'm going to vote. It's very clear who's at fault here. Did you see him wink at me during the closing? I'm sure he was flirting with me. He actually pointed to his ring finger as well. <laughs> I'm just glad the postcard sent to Brendan didn't cause a mistrial. That would have been a waste of our time. I wonder who sent it. Right, <clears throat> as foreman of the jury, uh, it is my duty to guide our deliberations today. Uh, he allegedly defrauded 30 people uh, mostly pensioners of over £800,000 by getting them to invest in him and his brother's business. Uh, the company was in James Wilson's name. Why is Brendan Wilson the primary perpetrator when it was his brother's company? It makes no sense. Brendan clearly pressurised the vulnerable into parting with their money. Yes, but so did his brother at his own admission. Brendan set up all the relationships. He did all the persuading and then the paperwork. According to his brother, who is clearly untrustworthy. My gut instinct tells me that Brendan... Yeah. Can we focus on the evidence, please? Right. Where do you think the money went? Only 100,000 went to the banks. Like, I just keep thinking, you know, in a few years' time, that could be me. Like, I would look at a man like Brendan and I would trust him if he gave me a card with a financial advisor credentials. There's so much for gut instincts. No, but that's an important fact, though. It goes to perceptions and how easily people can be deluded. Who are you calling deluded? I just don't think the testimony of one man is enough evidence on which to convict a person. So, firstly, please raise your hands for not guilty. Right. Margaret, two, three, okay. That's three for not guilty. And now, not proven. Hamish, two, three, four. Four for not proven. And now for guilty. Right. One, two, three, four. Gemma, Donna, Liam, David, Leanne. Thank you. So that is seven to acquit, including the not proven, and eight to convict. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a verdict. Brendan was a kind man. Some may say a ladies man. He loved nothing more than walking on the Mortcliffe Bay Cliffs. He first proposed on them when he was 16. It soon came to his senses, left those silly notions behind. He dropped out of Mortcliffe School, but by the time he was 20, he was a successful businessman. Yes, he lived life in the fast lane. Maybe he took it too far, but he paid his dues.
Next week would have been his 40th birthday. A fantastic character gone too soon. Thank you for coming. That was a lovely eulogy, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, and you are? I'm Margaret Donaldson. You may not remember me, but... Uh, give me a minute. Uh, thank you for helping with the service today. I know you volunteer here, but even so, this must have been awkward. What do you mean? Well, I recognise you from the jury at my brother's trial. One of the ones that sent him down, were you? Live and let live, that's what I always say. And like you said, he paid his dues. Brendan wasn't guilty of anything and you know it. You know it too. Is that why you came today out of guilt? I came to pay my respects. Ah, oh, yes. I remember you too. Look, the jury found Brendan guilty. Don't blame me for my opinions. Oh, Self-centred witches, both of you. <gasps> oh, girls. Come on. Brendan would have appreciated this. Women fighting over his memory. What's that? Is that from Brendan's collection? You should be ashamed of yourself. Stealing from a dead fraudster. Couldn't have come up with a better plan myself. Well, heavens. Margaret seems to be kind of desperate to be noticed. Yes. And the fact that she was forgotten by um, James Wilson was he remembered both the other two women in the jury as I sorry and you are so she's wanting to be noticed wanting to be remembered I think Margaret's starting to stand out for me because she's not as uh, nice as what she tried to make out I think she can she's a girl that can pack a bit of a punch for sure I'm going back to when she was talking about the letters that she's been receiving possibly think she's been sending them um, and I also think that Donna could be next. Margaret might have been one of the lovely ladies uh, taken by Brendan at some point in time. Uh, he actually showed her proper attention. There was a relationship. And then, of course, Brendan ended up um, getting in prison. Now she is desperate. And now she knows the people to go after. Well, let's take a look at the suspects board. And of course, we know now what James Wilson looks like. So we have Dale Coleman, Hamish McBride, Donna Atkins, Margaret Donaldson, and now James Wilson, who is Brendan's brother. As much as he was sort of paying his respects to his brother, I think he was highlighting some of his sort of misdemeanors as well, which seemed a bit bizarre. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's somewhere in my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to study him a little bit more. Now, let's pick a piece of evidence. Here are your choices. The data from Hamish's health app, the letters to Margaret Donaldson, and a new piece of evidence, which is a postcard sent to Brendan in prison. Um, Hamish's app is almost becoming insignificant mm. for me. I don't know about you two. Um, letters to Margaret, I think that might show up the same handwriting as the letter yep. yeah. Um, yeah, to the victim. So I don't think that's going to show anything. For me, I think we need to know who's sending postcards to Brendan. Agreed. Yeah. Postcard is a very sentimental uh, document to give to someone. Yep. So. And if the postcard handwriting matches that of the Fiona Williams letters, then I think we probably have something interesting there. Mm. Absolutely. So. Postcards? Yeah. Yes, okay. Please. On the front is a photo of the Bay Cliffs and a handwritten letter yes. is on the back. On Tuesday, I'll be at the Jury Lane Hotel until six. I don't sleep very well. I do worry I'll be tired. Jay sends her love. Going to buy flour and marge for your birthday cake. Has to be some sort of code. The handwriting is the same as that, the Fiona Williams letters. The I's are the same and the A's are the same. So I'm confident mm. that's the same hand has penned them both. I'm thinking that it's Margaret. The reference to don't sleep very well, um, maybe this could be something to do with um, her chemotherapy. Armchair detectives, it's time to lock it in again. Who's your prime suspect? Dale, Hamish, Donna, Margaret or James?
time's up. Notepads away, please, armchair detectives. Now, last time, Simon, you went for Hamish. Have you changed your mind? Indeed. Who have you gone for? Margaret. Margaret. I have a feeling that Brendan actually made time uh, for lovely Margaret, uh, Margaret here, probably the first time in her life, maybe. And now she wants revenge against the people who uh, took so him away from her. Revenge. Yes. Is Margaret. Oh, oh, this is an emotion. This no financial one. This is strictly matters of the heart here. Bola, last time you went for Dale. Yeah. Who have you gone for this time? I've switched. Have you? Yeah. To who? Margaret. Margaret as well. Margaret did it. Do you agree with Simon's analysis? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, just from the postcard that we saw, the same handwriting. Also, mm. didn't think I would agree with this, but the bald head possibly okay. was wearing okay. wigs and it could have blown off in the wind. OK. Just saying. Charlie, last time you went for... Margaret. Changed your mind? Not in the slightest. Oh, so all three of them have gone for Margaret. Why have you gone for Margaret? All the way through, she's been overlooked by everybody, ignored in the jury room, not recognised by the brother of the deceased. She's got eight to kill. Um, six are already done. She's got two left. And Donna, who I think she's probably saving for last due to her kind of basic unpleasantness, is going to be a, an element of her piece de resistance in the cliffs. Right. Now it's time for round five, armchair detectives. It's the final clues. The murder happened at the cliff edge, but will we solve this cliffhanger? Let's take a look. Dale, Gemma's boyfriend, was unfaithful to her. Two of his work colleagues told me he has quite the reputation for one-night stands. Hmm. Well, she could have found that out and confronted him about it at the cliffs. However, DNA samples do confirm that he did urinate behind the bush like he said he did. Yeah, let's not rule Dale out too soon, though. That's all I'm saying. There could be any number of motives for this. I have located James Wilson, though. He moved to Perryvale after the trial in case one of the victims wanted to get revenge on him. OK, that's something, at least. Um, let's pay Mr Wilson a visit. Hello? Ah, Miss Atkins. Yes, yes, I, I just have to tell you that I'm going to put you on speakerphone so that my colleague, DC Slater, can hear this. Hello? Hello? Yep, go ahead, we can hear you. Do you recognise the name? She calls herself Fiona Williams. She said she got my name from Amber Morton, whom I know died last year. I don't remember anybody by that name. Hmm. Well, please don't respond, and whatever you do, don't go near the Bay Cliffs. Uh, we'll send a colleague round to examine that letter. I'm not proud of myself. When I thought we were going to be unmasked, I uh, contacted the police. We made the deal so that I could testify without being convicted myself. What did your brother make of that? I told him as soon as I'd done it. He knew I wouldn't survive in prison. So whilst he wasn't happy with the situation, we both knew it was the right thing to do. What made you think you were so special you couldn't serve time in prison? I'm uh, sensitive. Some say he laid down his life for you. I'll forever be in his debt. Have you found anything interesting or unusual among your brother's possessions? Nothing. Hardly anyone came to his funeral. Although there were those women that were fighting over him. He was always a dark horse when it came to women. We couldn't resist them, you know? You'd be surprised how easy it is to pick up women when you're inside. He had a secret admirer on the outside. He got loads of letters. This goes to show, even if he was locked up, he still had it. Indeed. What do you think? They're very, very desperate. Because right now, if I knew that the police had the evidence, I'd kind of stop, but no, this this one, this killer's he's he or she is very desperate.
very desperate. Well, it's time to pick your final piece of evidence. You have just two pieces left to choose from. Which one do you fancy? Hamish's app or the letters to Margaret? Hamish's app, if he was going to offer that up, mm. he would make sure that it showed exactly what they wanted to see. I think we've only got one option, letters to Margaret. Letters? I think the app, I trust tech. Oh, thanks, guys. Just Simon, you know, isn't you've it? got the casting votes. Oh, no. OK. Uh, do you know what? Let's do, let's go for the app. The app? Let's go for the app. OK, you've chosen to see Hamish's app. We can see Hamish was at the cliffs during the murder. So you can see they're driving between 9 and 9.20, walking between 9.25 and 10, stationary between 10 and 10.30, walking 10.30 to 11, stationary 11 to 11.30. He's left his phone somewhere. Uh, I think it proves that he didn't do it. If the thing is stationary, then that means it it cannot move. And why would he stay around for half an hour? Why just stay there? It doesn't prove anything. Mm -hmm. It's accusation time. As you know, whoever guesses correctly will win this, the magnificent golden magnifying glass. I want you to write down who you're accusing. It's time to answer the only question that matters. Who done it? Time's up. Notepads away, armchair detectives. <sighs> Simon, who are you accusing? Margaret. Why? Hell have no fury like a woman scorned. And uh, literally, this is a woman who has been overlooked nearly all of her life. The first piece of comfort snaps it right up and it is taken away from her just as easily. Revenge. Bola. I've just changed my mind. OK. Who are uh, you accusing? Hamish. Hamish. I think that piece of evidence that we went for that I definitely didn't want to go for through me. The tracker? Yes. Charlie. I am sticking with Margaret as I have done all the way through. There's an entire borough in London who are going to be laughing at me if I get this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see what the final piece of evidence was and whether it would have changed your minds. These letters were provided to the police by Margaret Donaldson. They are handwritten letters and have been sent to Margaret from Fiona Williams, which mirror the letters sent to the other victims. Almost identical in what they say Fiona Williams, I walk the dogs every Tuesday from 10 a.m. at Beecliffs, but there are several letters there. Yeah, she did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't quite know that yet, Bola. Let's find out. <laughs> so what really happened in today's story, the jury's out. Who killed Gemma Hall? Let's find out who done it. <laughs> I think we can rule out Dale Coleman and James Wilson. Uh, James is clearly reformed, and even though Dale wasn't, I just, I just can't imagine he has a stomach for murder. Yeah, well, Hamish's location tracker checks out. Mm. We have a witness confirm he was talking to him near the scene. Margaret Donaldson, she's an odd one. Yeah. <laughs> the letters Brendan received in prison make for interesting reading. I'm sorry to call you in at such short notice. How's the chemotherapy going? It's all right, I suppose. Young love is a powerful thing, isn't it, Slater? Um, yes, sir. I have a theory that young love is the most potent expression of life. Do you like Romeo and Juliet? That's my favorite play. That's a nice engagement ring, Margaret. Who's the lucky man? Who was the lucky man? I think you meant to ask, Slater. My guess is the lucky man was Brendan Wilson. When you were very young, he gave you that ring and asked you to marry him on the Bay Cliffs. 
And years later, when you were called to jury service and recognized him, I wonder what your initial reaction was. See, I think Brandon was a manipulator who took advantage of you. We both felt the same way about one another. You didn't disclose that you knew the defendant. You also did your best to sway the jury. However, the evidence was enough to convict Brendan. We looked at letters Brendan received in prison. These letters in particular were sent during the time he was having his trial. In them, you say you were on the jury. The handwriting is similar to those sent to all the victims. You wrote to Brendan in prison. Brendan promised that when he got out, he would divorce his wife and marry you. Sadly, he died. In your mind, the members who gave Brendan a guilty verdict were the ones to blame. So you sent them letters, inviting them onto the cliff, and you pushed them over the edge. I also received letters, so it couldn't have been me. You received four letters. All the other victims only received one. We also examined a photograph taken by Gemma before she was pushed. We can clearly see a bald-headed person in the background. It's not fair. We were destined to be together. All these people living their perfect, happy lives where all I do is try to stay alive. Margaret Donaldson, I'm arresting you for the murder of Gemma Hall. And for suspicion of the murders of David Parkin, Liam Clark, Lewis Murphy, and Liana Schofield. Well, Bola, you knew it was her all along. <laughs> so are you. Can I just say you worked incredibly well as a team there? Brilliantly done. It just shows you what evidence you put can change your mind. You will get another go, though, Bola, so don't worry. Congratulations, Simon and Charlie. You both picked the killer and have won a golden magnifying glass. Well done. <laughs> Armchair detectives, did any of you pick the right killer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, quite a lot of them. They're always very <laughs> confident when they're sitting over there. So that's all from our armchair detectives. Tomorrow, Knight and Slater will be bowled over as they investigate a death at the local bowls club. But remember, no one gets away with murder in Markcliffe. Goodbye.